Welcome back to Detour, I'm Mia Mendez, and this is now my segment we call The Breakthrough with Mia Mendez. And the reason I named it that is because these are all artists, entertainers that I feel are on the verge, they are next. So I'm very excited to have with me today the triple threat, Gogo Morrow. <laughs> Welcome, Thank sweetie. you for having me, Mia. Oh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> um, as you know, I have seen you perform live quite a number of times. Yes. <laughs> and this is the first time we actually get to sit down and talk, so I'm excited because I, I have... I've admired you from afar. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that really means a lot. Yeah. Same here with oh, you. Oh, <laughs> I appreciate it. So I wanted to just take it back because the first thing I think of when I hear Gogo, me personally, I think of Gogo dancers. So, yeah. <laughs> so I wanted you to tell everybody just the history of why you picked the name Gogo Morrow. Yeah, that's a common misconception. Yeah. But the name actually came from. Well, I was watching a movie called Kill Bill, the volume yes. one, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and in the in the movie there's a character named Gogo Yubari. She's 16, she, but she's the deadliest assassin in the nice. movie. And so I found her her part to be very intriguing. I was like, I like that. Like, you know, she she's yeah. the most deadliest one, but you don't really see her coming. She doesn't look like it. Right. So it started off as a joke and I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna change my name to Gogo -Go on Facebook. And then so I changed it and then it stuck. People started calling me like Go it started from Go Go and then it went to Go, what's up, Go? So yeah. um Eventually, I decided to keep it as my artist name, and Morrow is my last name, my real last name. So, okay. just all kind of meshed well together. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that uh, Quentin Tarantino? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. I'm a, yeah, I'm a big fan of all, all his movies. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know, that, okay, so you sing, you song, right, you dance. Is yes. acting something you would want to do, like let's say Quentin called? <laughs> <laughs> At the right time, yeah, actually, my background, I started in musical theater okay. from, when, from when I was nine years old. So, that's really how I got my start in in, in the real industry besides singing around the house with my dad, um, was doing theater. I t used to take off from school and okay. tour the, the school system and do different plays. Um, yeah. So that was, it's definitely in my, in my history. I would love to revisit it, right. you know, when the time is right. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Also in your history, I read that your dad used to do this really fun bet with you growing up. So I think yeah. probably <laughs> um, instilled some of this drive in you. So give everybody that backstory. Definitely. My, my father, um, he sings, well, he, he still sings, okay. um, but he had a singing group with his brothers, my uncles, called the Golden Chandelier. So music was around me from when I was a very young age, when I was a baby. Okay. Um, but when I got old enough and he realized I enjoyed singing, he would play these call and response games mm -hmm. with me. And so he would say, if you can repeat after me and do it just how I do it, I'll give you $2. So <laughs> of course I wanted $2 to go buy chips or a hug right. or Swedish fish. So, I, you know, eventually I, I started... I tried it. I probably didn't start really well, but right. um, but after a while, I, you know, I started being good at it. Yeah. And he was like, "Oh, she really will be able to sing or can sing." So, um, and it's funny because I have like a video of me singing when I was like six, and I sound bad. But then I have oh, another. No. Then I have another video of me when I was seven, and I I was really I was singing right, very well to be seven years old. So yeah. I mean, obviously that definitely it proved to work right <laughs> the games that he played it definitely did because not many artists who are breaking through as you are can yeah. already say they have on their resume that they toured for two years with somebody as massive as this person is please tell everybody who you toured yes. with for two years <laughs> <laughs> i toured with uh, lady gaga for two nice. years um and i was background singer slash dancer we did everything nice um and it was just a great experience i had front row seats to one of the greatest artists of our time so yeah. i definitely um it was able to i was able to learn from her all the different things I would need to bring me to this road that I'm yeah. on now. Yeah. <laughs> I see that when you perform, you know, and you perform all over Philly, Jersey, I mean, different places you perform. When I yeah. watch you, I think that you have amazing stage presence. Thank you. And it feels <laughs> like that. Like, then, that's yeah. why when I read that you had toured with Lady Gaga, I was like, of course, because yeah. you have <laughs> that big star feeling. Yeah. When and definitely that, and that has come from, from that experience, but it also comes from all the different things I did as a as a young girl, all of that has yeah, it's all created the element of go go really. Right. <laughs> so. Take us to that place to where I guess you had to audition to get with Lady Gaga. Kinda. Yeah. How did <laughs> it was that a, it was a weird situation. I mean, I I just counted as fate, but I went to an audition for um, some a completely different artist for Kelly Rowland. She was looking for oh, background nice. singers, and um, and I went last minute. I wasn't going to go because at that time I had just graduated school and I was. I just got a new job and I was getting ready to start um, law school. So I was working at Drexel University so I could get the discount or whatever. <laughs> but, um, so around that time I decided, I was like, I'm not sure if that's really what I want to do. I'm, I'm not really happy with my decision. So 
I was telling a friend, and then like a couple days later, they called me. And they're like, "So you you said that you didn't want to do this, so you need to go to this audition for yeah. Kelly Rowland." I'm like, "It's too late. It's last minute." So um, I ended up going, and I made it through the final rounds, and then I went home, and I didn't hear anything for a week. Oh. And um, so maybe a week after that, maybe two weeks after the audition, I get a call from someone named Joe Wilson. And he's like, hello, um, this is Joe Wilson from the Kelly Rowland Auditions. I just wanted to um, offer you another position. He wow. said, you can, you can do the Kelly Rowland thing, but I want to offer you something different. <laughs> and so he said, Lady Gaga. And I was just like, yes. Oh, my and, God. <laughs> and so he said, no, I want you to take your time, think about it. You will be gone for a while. I said, no, I don't need to think about it. I'm, I'm Absolutely. there. Absolutely. That's so, like a no-brainer. Yeah, it's <laughs> a no-brainer. And um, three days later, I was on a flight to L.A., and I did my first show at the Staples Center. So, oh, very yeah. nice. Very <laughs> nice. Are there any artists um, that you've met throughout just traveling, performing, that have had a lasting experience on you other than Lady Gaga? Yeah. Um, well, I also, I worked at um, as an intern for Philadelphia International Records, and I also worked as, a, as an assistant at Def Jam while I was still in in school, so I, I met a lot of artists who came through the record label, but I, re I remember one in particular was Kanye West. And ah. I was in a meeting I wasn't supposed to be in, but um, he brought his, he brought, it was right after his tour with, uh, um, he did the Glow in the Dark tour, so he right. brought the video to the, to the meeting. And so he was standing on the table, he had on these red sneakers. He was like, do you see this? Do you see this? I did this, da, da, da. So I was just like, he is very interesting, but awesome. I, what I took from it was that he, it didn't matter if anybody else believed in what he was doing. Like, he believed in it wholeheartedly. And nice. I think that's the most important part is that you have to believe it before anybody else can believe. Right. That you, you know, that this is really what you want to do. This is really your vision. Mm -hmm. And so ever since that moment, I'm like, I got to believe in what, nice. what I'm going to do in order to sell it. Definitely before I let you go, though, if you, yeah. anyone knows me, I always hashtag everything on Instagram, ow, ow. It, like, you know, yeah. if a sexy guy, whatever, it's like, ow, ow. So uh -huh. if you had to pick one celebrity really quickly and you would hashtag on Instagram, ow, ow, who would that be? Um, I would have to say the game. I love the game. You love the game? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> awesome. So hopefully yeah. he'll see this and ow, ow to the game. <laughs> Bobo, thank you so much thank for you. coming on the breakthrough with me. If you could say really quickly your website for everyone. Yes, it's www.gogomorrow.com. Awesome. I love you. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you. you. <laughs>